The train keeps on chugging, and the Dallas Mavericks score their fourth straight victory all at home. The Mavericks are freaking on fire right now. This is an incredible stretch by the team, scoring another 143 points tonight, winning by 42 again. First time in franchise history they've won back-to-back -back games by more than 28 points. They did it by 48 the other night against Golden State. They do it by 42 tonight against the Cavaliers and this was just this was a uh, just a continuation of what we've seen from this team. You have Luka setting the pace. Didn't even need him in the fourth quarter, but he still gave you 30 points, 14 assists and 7 rebounds. Justin Jackson with a season high 19 points as well. Season high 6 boards as well. So I like seeing J Justin Jackson get going a little bit. That's my guy. Uh 7 of 11 from the field from him overall. Porzingis a slow start in the first half offensively, but you know what? 17 points. He got, what, six buckets in the in the third quarter. Luka assisted on five of them. So 17 points for him, seven rebounds, four blocks, another very strong performance there. Tim Hardaway Jr., say what you want. The dude is rolling the last couple of games. You put him in the starting lineup, and he's producing. 16 points again, and uh, six of eight from the field, four of five from three. The dude is automatic right now, and that's great. And he did take a little bit of a scary uh, kind of conk heads with KP, really more KP's cheekbone with the back of Tim Hardaway's head, but Hardaway went back to the locker room. Didn't really play or anything after that, but you know what? They didn't need him. It's fine. So this was this was just a, a complete game from the Mavericks here. They didn't really pull away until the third quarter, but that's fine because Luka took over. I think Luka at one point in the third quarter in like eight minutes of play had like 13 points and what was it, like four assists in eight minutes. I mean, it, it's baffling the kind of production that he can put together in a small amount of time. So you have the Mavericks who over the last three games have trailed for a grand total of of two minutes and 41 seconds. That's against the Raptors, excuse me, that's against the Spurs, the Warriors, and now the Cavaliers. Against the Raptors, it was a much closer game. That was the game I was at. But the last three games have only trailed for two minutes and 42 seconds. And while none of these teams are in great position right now, obviously, I mean, Toronto's a good team. Toronto is a tough team. But the last three games, uh, what, you got to win the games that are there in front of you. And when you're a team who had, until this homestand, really struggled to take care of business on your home floor, this is a quality, quality stretch here. Should build a little bit of confidence. And, man, I got to say, Luka Doncic is playing out of his freaking mind right now. He absolutely owns the basketball court. We saw flashes of this Last year, you'd see a stretch where he would take over like the end of that Houston game in Dallas last year where he had the final 11 points. You saw flashes of it. This right now, this is like in this stretch run here of the past week or so, it's him just owning the floor. Like if he's on the floor, he is the best player out there and it's not even a question it seems like. So that is, that is phenomenal. At 20 years old, for him to already be at this level is nothing short of phenomenal. I don't know what his ceiling is or anything like that. The The way in which he plays the game and that he keeps his teammates involved, however, is great. Like I said, KP was struggling offensively in the first half, started the game one of eight shooting. He gets six buckets in the, sec er, in the second half, all in the third quarter because he didn't need to play in the fourth quarter, but gets six buckets just like that. Luka assists on five of them. He's setting up his teammates to accomplish these uh, these milestones and everything. So... It's great. It's not just a hero ball, like, give me the ball and I'm going to do everything. It's him going out there and just trying to make the most of it. He understands he is the alpha of this team. I said even when, you know, the Mavericks traded for KP, hey, that's great that we got KP, and at, at best he'll be our, our 1A, so to speak. But Luka is the guy. This is Luka's team, and KP is just the uh, one of the most dynamic Robins, if you will, to pair with this team and that's basically what we've seen Dallas is Dallas is cooking right now and what I really like I've said before your bench players are going to play better at home than they'll play on the road and that's kind of what what uh played out in this homestand Dallas goes 4-0 at home and they get in most every game solid play up and down the the bench 
Like I said, I like a lot what you got out of Justin Jackson in this case. I think they really need to give him more minutes consistently, give him more opportunity. And Hardaway Jr., they're going to have to really consider keeping him as shocked as I am to say this because of how he's shooting the ball right now. They need to consider leaving him in the starting lineup for the time being because, hey, this is like three or four games now where he's produced at least 16 points and he's shooting a damn good percentage. He's on a hot stretch. And when you have Tim Hardaway Jr. and he's on a hot stretch, you need to get the most mileage out of it that you can. So this is good. This is good. He said coming into the season, and I admit, I, I roasted Hardaway Jr. mercilessly through the first few weeks of the season. But he came into the season saying he wanted to be the Michael Finley to KP and Luka's Dirk and Nash of the early aughts for the Mavericks. And, I mean, it really is the late 90s and early aughts, but you get my point. So that's what that's the role he wanted to play. And through the first month and change of the season, it was not looking like that at all, like that was going to be feasible. But you know what? Right now, when he's hot, you can see it a little bit. You can see him being kind of that third guy. I still think that they need a little bit more. There are still some... I mean, they're not a great defensive team, obviously. You give up one-on-one in this case of the Cavs. I know it was largely garbage time, and it's not like you had your main guys out there, but... The Mavericks are a team right now that will just throw a very diverse scoring attack at you. Number one, uh, I believe they are in the top, if not the top right now, um, offense in the league in terms of efficiency and everything, like points per 100 possessions. I'd have to see where they stand after this game, but these last two games and the fact that we're still, you know, 15 games into the season, it's going to drastically skew those numbers in Dallas's favor where two games like this back to back are going to swing that number more drastically than you would see if this was game 50 something, you know? So Dallas, one of the best offenses in the league and Luca is absolutely controlling everything. KP is making his presence felt re continues to rebound very well. The fact that he got seven boards in this game and you're looking at it, you're like, Oh, KP kind of had a whole hum game rebounding that shows to KP's credit how much better he's rebounded this year. Aside from game one and two, where he got four boards and four boards, and I was very critical of him for that, he has rebounded much better. And he still got four blocks, so he is getting a complete presence. And you saw in the second half, at least, that three ball start to kind of come on a little bit. From three, he goes three of five on the game. He ends up shooting seven of 14 from the field. KP goes seven of 14 from the field after starting one of eight. That is how drastically, like, he got it cooking in the second half. Luka was finding him for great spot-ups, and to KP's credit, a couple of those threes, good God, the range on a couple of those threes. But Luka sets him up nice and pretty with great looks, and uh, KP knocks him down. So that is what makes them as a one-two punch so hard to guard. If both if, if both of them are controlling the game, and KP is hitting those spot-up shots like we've said this whole time, like, hey, look for him to start doing it. Look for him to start doing it. He's getting more comfortable. I know they haven't been there in the early stretch of the year, but watch out. He's going to start connecting on these because throughout his career, that's what he's always done with the spot-up opportunities like that. You're seeing it. You're seeing it. And what's better, the best thing about Luka's game, and he's improved across a number of facets, right? His field goal percentage uh, is is drastically higher than last year. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but I want to say he's shooting about 47% from the field he was shooting 42 close to 43 percent basically round up to 43 percent last year on two-point field goals he is much better right around the rim he's about 63 percent at the rim and that's just talking about those uh drive and those like real short basically borderline floaters like within four feet of the rim and uh just getting all the way to the cup he's imposing his will he's getting to the rim he's finishing at a very high rate the only thing that hadn't been there totally this season for him is the three-pointer because he insists on the difficult step-back three and never just the wide-open spot-up three. seems like he gets one of those looks every three games because he just doesn't wait for him. He just likes to make things happen himself and go off the dribble, particularly the step-back. But he goes four of eight in this game on uh, on threes. Two turnovers, 14 assists, 30 points in 28 minutes, 11 of 18 from the field for Luka. He is controlling this game. And Dallas is feeding off of it. This whole team is feeding off of it. Because Luka is getting perfect looks, not just for himself, but for KP, for Tim Hardaway Jr. Uh, He's getting good looks for Justin Jackson if he's in the game. Dorian Finney-Smith, DeLon Wright. DeLon Wright had a decent game for the Mavericks too. 
Plays 20 minutes, 10 points, 4 boards, 2 assists on 4 of 9 shooting. What I like from DeLon Wright is he's 1 of 2 from 3, but you saw a lot more confidence in him taking those shots than you've seen, I think, overall. Uh, Maxi again, I think Maxi had a good game. Had a monster dunk at one point after a KP block going the other way. Just flew in out of nowhere and pretty much tomahawked it. But uh, Maxi's numbers, 19 minutes, 4 points, 5 boards, 2 of 4, 0 of 1 on 3, 1 block, 1 steal. Ho-hum numbers, but I think Maxi had himself a solid performance. And let's see, Berea, hey, Berea got some minutes here. Yeah, they were mostly garbage time, but Berea gets 12 minutes, 12 points, 1 rebound, 2 assists, 5 of 8 shooting, 2 of 3 from 3. I think on the mark down there, I might have the incorrect number. No, I got 12 points. I got it right. The only Maverick who played tonight and did not score was uh, Ryan Brokoff. He gets eight minutes, one board, one assist, but 0 of 2 from the field. That's the only guy that didn't score. I mean, top and bottom, the Mavericks were pretty filthy in this game. 58% from the field compared to 43% for Cleveland. 54% from three compared to 41. 78% at the line. A low free throw shooting night for the Mavericks. Only nine attempts, but they made seven. Uh, The Cavaliers much better in that regard. 15 of 17 for 88%. Mavericks only five turnovers. That's huge. When we talk about Dallas, usually their turnover numbers are somewhere in the area of 15, 16, it seems like, pretty consistently. So for them to only have five is very, very good. Cleveland had 10 turnovers for uh, context there. 31 assists compared to 23 49 boards compared to 30, or yeah, 49 compared to 34. 10 offensive for the Mavericks, 8 for Cleveland. 7 blocks KP leading the way with 4 compared to 3. And uh, fouls basically even in that regard. Dallas had a couple more, 18 to 15. But this was, uh, this was a really, really nice game for the Mavericks. Like I said, first time in franchise history for them to win back-to-back games by more than 28 points. They win by 48 against the Warriors. Granted, it was the Warriors basically uh, fifth-string roster if you compare it to how good the Warriors have been in recent years. I get it, but 48 there, 42 here, and you're on a roll. Offensively, everything's clicking, and the best thing you can do is get a bunch of guys with growing confidence because that's going to help you because now you got to get on the road and go... Uh, to Houston, and that's not going to be an easy game. The Rockets have been very good this year. I'm trying to see here. Uh, Osman for the Cavaliers had a good game. I wanted to call out 18 points. You also got out of Garland, 23 points. I was trying to see Kevin Love, very ho-hum night for him. I know some people have asked about trading for him. 25 minutes, 8 points, 7 boards, only 2 of 8 shooting, and uh, 0 of 3 from the 3-point line. So the Mavericks are going to... Shifting back to Houston here, the Mavericks are going to have their hands full. Luka's going to have to go on against basically two guys that can take over a game in their own right. The Rockets have that advantage, having obviously Westbrook and Harden, two MVPs in their midst. And the Rockets are playing right now at the Clippers. Uh, Looks like it's a tight game there. I wanted to see what the Rockets have done. I know they just had a game. They recently just lost to the Nuggets on the 20th. So this is their first game after that loss. But the Rockets were cooking for a while there. Four, five, six, seven, eight. They had an eight-game win streak earlier this year. So, yeah. No uh, no disrespect at all there. All I can say, they got two guys that are a walking triple-double threat. It seems like this year they let Russ kind of get the triple-double and Harden just tries to stack up an ungodly number of points. That's their recipe. That's what they're going to try and do. And Dallas, you're going to have to have... You're going to have to win the battle on the boards. You're going to have to keep your turnovers low. And you're going to have to have Luka playing just like he is right now. If Luka is playing like this and some of your bench guys can actually connect on those shots that he's setting them up for, as they've done throughout this homestand, they can beat them. Like, if Dallas plays like this, they showed you with Toronto. I know that was a home game, but they showed you with Toronto. They showed you previously with the Lakers. They showed you with the Blazers, although I know the Blazers have fallen off from where we thought they were going to be. Compared to the last couple years, you know, where they still were at the time we faced them very early in the year. Compared to where they are now, uh, now with Carmelo Anthony, it's a very different look than what we've seen for the, uh, you know, history of that. But the Mavericks have shown they can stand stand toe-to-toe with these very good teams. And in some cases, 
They've been able to take them down. In other cases, they haven't executed late, and it's cost them. Made a lot of mistakes at the end of the Portland game, and it cost them. Made a couple crucial mistakes and a couple missed calls, but I'm not going to really harp on those right now. Against the Lakers, you lost that one. The Celtics, you were there. They just kind of pulled away late. Um, the opportunity is there is what I'm saying. You can You can do this. And you have a team that is going to grow together this season. That's the thing. Like, we want to return to the playoffs this season. And we certainly think that we have a team that is capable of doing that. This is not the team that Dallas is going to run with, though. This is like the introduction year, right? This is the, all right, let's get out there. Let's get them used to playing with each other. Let's see how they feel. And we'll go from there. But we're not going to, we're not going to sweat it here too much. This is just about... Let's see what works, and then we're going to make an assessment from there about what we want to do with the team uh, once we get into that real contendership window in the next year. So the Mavericks are 10-5 and five right now. Uh, that's actually... No, that's updated. No, it's not. No, that's sorry. That game is back. Yeah. So it's updated here. The Mavericks are currently sitting at fourth in the Western Conference at 10-5. and five. They have won four straight... Much better vibe than where we were this time last week. This time last week, we were sitting around six and five, and uh, we were kind of thinking like, "Oof, we've kind of we've kind of fallen off a little bit here." But you know what? Hot streak like this, hopefully they can ride it a little while longer. As long as you got cool hand Luca with an ironically hot hand, then uh, you're going to be able to stay in a lot of these games. KP. Salute to you, brother. You're finding some real rhythm. You're getting comfortable. It's visible. It's easy to see. You are attacking the rim. You are more aggressive going for those blocks. And it is clear that you are still finding your way back, but you're getting there. You're getting there. The field goals, not always super right there uh, in terms of the touch and the, the feel for the rhythm. But that's all right. As long as you got a point guard like Luca who can set you up beautifully and you got a guy whenever you need him, J.J. Barea, we haven't been allowed to see that yet because this was only Barea's second game of action. Uh, when you got Barea in there, he can also set you up nice and easy as well whenever we get to those moments later in the year. But not a lot more to say, man. Dallas is cooking right now. And while this four-game home stretch only had really one true challenge in terms of where the other teams stood by the time we faced them at, in Dallas... Hey, you can only play the game that's there in front of you. You built momentum and you took care of business like you should have. So now, try and ride that momentum as you head into a real, real challenge here against the Houston Rockets, who are currently 11-4. and You're only a game back at Houston. That's how good this stretch has been for Dallas. Houston is 11-4. and Again, they're playing the Clippers right now on the road, so we'll see where they are this time tomorrow. But uh, there's a lot to look forward to. That game is going to be Sunday night. I, I don't know if I'm going to game companion it, but I'll, I'll be honest, I am tempted. So look for updates on that. That's going to do it for my time. Don't forget to like this video, share the video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this content. If you really want to if you really want to support us, check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash the Dallas Prospect. And until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.